Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we focus on reconnaissance and control of the battlefield. Today, we're going to start out by building a space wax. Might sound kind of funny, but the original term is AWAX. But since this is Space Engineers, we're going to adjust the name to match. This wax, in short, is going to be basically a flying command control center. This is similar to what the current AWAX is. The AWAX is a unique aircraft that has a rotating dome on the top of it and has a radar system powerful enough to see up to 500 miles to identify either ground targets or air to air targets or air to ground targets. When you think about it, it's a huge achievement for mankind. In fact, radar systems have given the advantage over the enemy since about World War II, or right before World War II, when the UK created the first working radar system to detect when German airplanes were going to fly over. A radar system is actually pretty simple. When a signal is sent out, it is reflected off of metal. Since most aircraft are composed primarily of metal, every time a beam of energy is hit, it excites the electrons in the metal and causes them to revert back to the source, which is the radar tower. This is how we see the images on a screen. The AWAX is really good at doing this. It has a very, very powerful antenna that was designed by the Westinghouse company. And this radar system is mounted to the aircraft, either a 707 airframe or larger, which pulses a signal over and over and over again in a 360 degree angle. It's able to shoot angular downward and angular upward to detect if there's any metal moving objects either in the air or on the ground. This radar system is more powerful than most of the Navy ships out there and their radar systems. In fact, if you're testing this thing on the ground, you might want to be a few thousand yards away from it to avoid radiation. To power this radar system, it takes an ungodly amount of kilowatts. Most of these aircraft have 8 to 10 generators just to power it. To put that in perspective, if you lived in a town with about 10,000 people, one of these aircraft could power most of that town. The original AWAC system was built on a 707 airframe. It wasn't too complicated. They modified small commercial aircraft back then and mounted struts that extended over the fuselage by about 11 feet as the support pillars for the large rotodome. The rotodome is simply a rotating dome with the radar system inside of it. The inside is approximately six feet tall. So if you're under six foot, I imagine that you could easily walk through it. The diameter of it is over 30 feet. I'm not quite sure how much it weighs, but that thing has got to weigh a lot. Imagine the huge bundle of wiring inside that thing used for the radar system. To cool the entire thing, because electronics get very hot in confined spaces, the aircraft uses a cooling system that pulls air off of the engines and then is rapidly cooled before scenting back up to the dome. The dome is spun typically with a very heavy-duty hydraulic system, and most of them have two different hydraulic motors that drive it. I'm not quite sure on all the functionalities of the aircraft itself, but I do know in general that it is able to detect 
enemy aircraft or vehicles on the ground and is able to relay that information to nearby fighter aircraft and bombers. This is what makes it an overall command center. Right now I'm just building the basic framework of the aircraft. It's usually not too big. Inside, if you imagined an aircraft that could hold about 50 passengers, that's approximately the size of the 707 airframe. This one, of course, on Space Engineers is going to be quite a bit smaller because we don't want a huge god awfully aircraft and we don't have 50 other players we're actually going to put inside of this ship. The original AWACS was designed with propellers instead of jet engines. It was capable of a lot lower altitudes and a lot slower speeds. Back then, that AWACS maybe traveled at 170 miles an hour and its range was a lot shorter, around 200 miles. This made it a great target for enemy aircraft. Unfortunately, it could not fly fast enough to get away from them. It was often taken down during certain wars. Around the 1970s is when they designed the E3 Sentry AWACS. It came equipped with the latest jet engines and the electronics that allowed it to push a signal past that 500 mile range, which kind of eliminated the possibility of any enemy aircraft being able to take it out. Of course, whenever it is flying, more than likely it does have assistance with fighter aircraft or other aircraft that could protect it. Most variations of the AWACS, depending on which country is operating it, has the ability to refuel in the air also. Unlike most commercial aircraft, military aircraft are designed to be able to stay in the air longer and have the capability of longer range just by refueling them. All right, I think that's most of the front end on this thing. It's kind of ugly, but this is going to be more of a space design rather than a conventional aircraft design. Regular conventional aircraft design will have a longer cockpit, which is more aerodynamic. It's not too bad. It's coming together. That's most of the fuselage. Now we just have to work on this tail section. The original AWACS design had a single vertical epinage or rudder system. 
For this version, we're going to make it a V-tail. A V-tail is often found on other foreign aircraft designs, the later versions of the AWACS. They're usually a bigger aircraft and they have a V-tail which helps stabilize the turbulence that's caused by their radar disc. In the game, it's quite difficult to create an aircraft that looks smooth and aerodynamic, especially when most of the blocks are squared, triangles, or partial triangles. We could have used more rounded blocks, but then it might end up looking more like a 1950s designed car, you know, with the, the bubble fenders, the long hood, the rounded roof. I think with using these triangle blocks and angled blocks in the corners though, it does give it more of a space feel. I think in the future, they will more than likely have a version of the AWACS called the SWAX, which instead of an air warning and control system, it'll be a space warning and control system. I'm sure in the future, mankind will eventually end up having strategic alliances and unfortunately, battles in space. This will require a lot of different surveillance. You still couldn't just use a satellite dish in space because the satellite dish can only really be pinpointed in certain locations at certain times and hopefully pick up an enemy that way. The scanning systems that you would use, say, on a planet to scan the solar system as they currently do to track meteors would not be as practical either if your enemy is able to move. For meteors, they don't really move or they at least follow the same projection the entire time. So navigating a satellite to focus just on that routine direction is a lot easier than say following a fighter spaceship that is trying to outmaneuver your abilities to track them. For this, I think they'll have a SWAX in space and it'll be another command and control center, just like it is on Earth. There we are. Got most of the tail done. The side done. You just got to remember how I did the left side so I can do the right side. Sometimes it's difficult to remember after it takes you so long to build one side on how the heck did you build the other side in the first place. I often catch myself going back and forth looking at the other blocks trying to figure it out. The 
This seems about right. So unlike most spaceships though, I don't think a SWAX will have any fighting capabilities itself. Just like the AWACS, they're usually surrounded by fighter aircraft, bomber aircraft, or attack aircraft. Similar in space, it would be space fighters, space attack, and space bombers. Somehow I seem to have miscalculated where I was supposed to put this block at. I think it's because I didn't cut out the extra row like I did before. Because if I put these, it matches the front, but it doesn't match the other side. Yeah, I think I forgot to cut out one of these lines. Well, eventually I figured it out and finished it. It was a matter of cutting in one line all the way back to match the other side. Hmm. I think I used the wrong block here too. There we go, I think I got everything uniform at this point. Random blocks here and there. Well, that's most of the fuselage itself. You have the front cockpit, the cabin area, and then finally the tail area. Might not be that great to look at, but it's something. All we really needed to do is to work as a flying command and control center. And I should probably put a door in here too, because if I don't, we'll never get past. Sometimes I get ahead of myself building the design of something and then I completely forget to leave an entrance and have to go back, change a lot of different things. Otherwise, I'm kind of left out in the cold. I like using just a standard hinge to create a door. It makes it super easy to operate, open and close. You can add merge blocks to your, the edges of your doors instead of using half blocks or anything like that. And then once you close it, you can have those merge blocks grouped together and activated 
so it creates a pressure seal. It's a lot easier when you have, say, a rectangular or square entrance, but when you have one with angles, it makes it a little bit more difficult because the merge blocks don't come in angular positions, they only come in squares. Hmm, I don't know if that looks correct. Let's see if it works. Yep, seems to work. See, just a easy push button switch. You can put a switch on the side or just put it as an operation on your flight controls. So just push the G button. It'll give you the option to select different items to control while you're in the cockpit. I noticed in some old pictures that there was blue carpet throughout a lot of these AWACs, so I decided, hey, why not go ahead and try to make blue carpet in this one? This is gonna be your cockpit platform where we'll put the control seats. I'm just going to put a general wall to separate them. Looks kind of high though. Like the floor itself looks kind of high compared to the windows. Ah, that's better. All right, I'm just gonna put two seats here. If you really wanted to, you could put a lot of different screens on the sides and stuff like that. A lot of these cockpits, they have several different circuit breakers, digital gauges in the front. But since this is a space one, we're going to stick to just the control seat. That way it matches the style of the spacecraft instead of making it specifically like the current AWACS. I think we need more viewing though. If I change these out, just put some more windows, probably be easier to see when we're operating this thing. Let's see, what else do we need? That window does not look right for some reason. Yeah, it seems like it's off for some odd reason. Maybe I put it in backwards. Well, let's see if we can flip it around, make it match easier. I don't have OCD or anything, but if you're a person with OCD, you'd probably spot that right away. I think that looks better. It doesn't look equal, but I guess it'll work. Okay, so entire fuselage is basically done. Just got to finish this back part here. Kind of did it in a bit. I basically just closed it up. All aircraft have an angled back that goes up. That way when they're taking off, they tilt towards the back to get lift off or lift from the engines and the wings. If you didn't tailor it up, then you'd end up scraping the ground. Since this is a spacecraft and we will have VTOL or vertical takeoff, I'm not that worried about it. It's just more of an aesthetic thing. All right, all blocked in. Now, what else can we do to this thing? Oh, wait, is that a wolf? Oh, you gotta be careful around this place. Luckily, I have my other ship parked nearby. He probably took him out with a Gatling cannon. Sheesh. That would have caused us to have to restart on this project. Okay, what's next? What should we do?
Well, I suppose we should put some wings on this thing. Be it would look kind of funny just being a big tube flying around. Now for this, to make it more of a wing-like structure, you could use the two by one by one angled blocks and then some half blocks. But in this case, I'm using just the standard triangle blocks and square blocks, but I'm doing one triangle block, two square blocks, one triangle block, etc., etc. On the back, I ended up using that two by one by one to make it look like the wing actually has flaps. You could put actuating flaps on the back if you wanted, but it's not necessary since it's going to be a spacecraft. Flaps, if you don't know, are the moving flight control surfaces that create more drag and more lift. Basically, when you angle them down, they catch more air and give the wings more lift. Essentially, they're used for landing an aircraft at lower speeds or taking off with a heavier aircraft. To keep with the original design of an AWACS, I'm just going to put four large atmospheric thrusters, two on each wing. The original engines were designed around the 1960s for the first AWACS system. And if you look it up, I think they're uh, TF-33 something. Anyways, they were primitive jet engines for sure compared to today's technology. And most of the aircraft have been updated since. This is where we're going to start our standoffs for the Rotodome. Now, the weight of a rotodome on these AWAC versions varies. Depends on the components that they actually put inside of it, what aircraft frame it's on, and its overall functionality. I think they can range anywhere between 12,000 pounds and 20,000 pounds, depending on the items that they have inside of the rotodome. On Space Engineer's version though, we're going to use a standard rotor and attach everything to the standard rotor. For the central section, I'm using black square or black blocks, which is the exact opposite of the original AWACS. The original AWACS looks more like a hostess cake because it has a white center with black sides. The white center is considered the strong back. It is the structural support of the dome overall. Where the sides are made out of a different material, that is lighter, of course, than the strong back itself to try to cut down on weight from its operation. That's the base of it. It's a bit more difficult in Space Engineers to make a circle 
when you have all square blocks and triangle blocks. So we're just going to get as close as possible. If you ever watched Making a Diner, one of my older videos, you'll see the general construct of how to make a circle or a dome. What I do specifically is I draw a circle on a Microsoft Paint or Paint program and just the circle. I don't fill it in or anything. And then I look at that circle when I need as a reference and count the pixels. So in this dome, you have a total amount of seven blocks extending from all four sides of your original support block. Then I just kind of cut it in and so on. And you end up getting a result like this. It doesn't look too bad, but it is what it is. Inside of the rotor dome, I just put several antennas. It's not necessarily a requirement. You only really need one antenna because multiple antennas is not going to assist you in any way on Space Engineers. But to keep up with kind of the realism of an AWACS, I put multiple in there to kind of simulate a radar system. There's the V-tail, pretty simple. I think that's everything on the exterior of this aircraft. I need to fix that block. It, it, that's terrible. I must have put it in sideways or something. But that's the general build of it. Going to have to figure out some landing gear for this thing. I think everything else looks pretty decent. And then finish the interior. I think I am going to add these smaller air thrusters on the bottom of this. So we don't have to necessarily stare at them the whole time. Hopefully if I put one every three blocks down, it should give us enough lift. So when I take off that bottom landing gear, we don't just crash into the ice. Maybe I should add some side ones. Keep us from going side to side whenever we're trying to stop. If space engineers relied more on an atmospheric capability, such as having jet streams, air pressure, aerodynamics, that kind of thing, similar to what they have on the game Kerbal Space Program, if you've ever checked that out, I definitely enjoy that game and they have a new version coming out in 2023. But on that game, you can have your aerodynamics actually affect how you fly through the atmosphere. Where in Space Engineers, we really just rely on gravity. It doesn't matter which angle that your blocks are facing or anything like that, because the aerodynamics do not come into play. So I figured I might want to add some power to this thing or we won't be able to do anything at all. For this, I'm going to start out probably two nuclear reactors and see if that'll sustain us because we don't have that much stuff on this spacecraft. But if not, I may have to build this bigger. Then of course, add some lighting. I 
I remember seeing in different movies, uh, especially the, I think it was the first Transformers movie, where they showed a general interior of an AWACS. It was pretty cool. I don't know if they actually have that type of lighting inside, or if it's a, more of a generic fluorescent lighting. Okay, time to build these small control consoles. I'm just using these passenger seats to define them. I know there's decorative blocks, modifications, and stuff like that for this game where you can have more realistic seating. But as of yet, I haven't reached the point in this game where I feel the need to get every modification available. So for now, we're just going to use these passenger seats and kind of simulate what a console might look like on the aircraft. Mm, that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to put another one. We might not have enough space for that. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to put this programming block. Even though we're not really going to use it for anything, it's just for aesthetics. Then, I think that's about it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Probably don't want to leave these screens blank like that. There we go. Now, when you go to put in screens... It doesn't take that many resources. I use the text box screen on here because the other screens wouldn't fit on these small blocks. Once you have it installed though, you just simply click on the screen and choose an icon. So you have different graphs or images that you already have in the game and you can place those. If you want to put your own image, there is a way to do it, but it is kind of tedious. Now for the landing gear, just going to use rotors. These rotors are not actually going to propel us. It's just so we have a place to connect the wheels for free spinning. Most landing gear start out right below the wings or the central part of the wings because where the central part of the wing is, is usually your center of gravity. There's typically, depending on the weight of the aircraft, one set or two sets of dual wheels as your main landing gear. For the front, you don't put a lot of pressure on them, so we're just going to put one wheel on the front on each side. That's how most aircraft are designed, unless they're very large, heavy-duty versions. There are other aircraft out there that are pretty unique, there is the B-52, or Buff, as a nicknamed bomber aircraft. It has been around for a long time. Its counterpart to that, or comparison to that, is the Bear, which is owned by the Russians. And they both have, I think, anyways, a quad landing gear system, meaning that they have a set of equal gear in the front and the back, and they both steer. Okay, well, I didn't see any holes up there or anything, so I think that gear worked out. Overall, we're getting pretty close to having this thing done. I'm sure there's cosmetic things that we could do to this aircraft to make it better, but as it is, it's really just a general build to become part of our strategy later. On every aircraft, you have two lights, one on each wingtip, kind of like boats.
Well, you can see the dome spinning now. I turned it on just for the heck of it. I like how the interior lights is breaking through at those vertical struts and kind of lights up the dome. Sheesh. Didn't think it was going to touch down that hard. We may need to increase the amount of atmospheric thrusters and I noticed that the power level that we were consuming was 100% so definitely need to add probably a few more batteries and more nuclear reactors to charge them I think we can keep it stable enough if I just do a block or two at a time hopefully these thrusters will let us down easy so we don't just crash so far, so good. Of course, since we don't have landing gear on here, we just have wheels, and we don't have this thing parked, the atmospheric thrusters are just gonna run and run and run, thinking that it's supposed to lift up the aircraft until we either manually turn them off, in which case that's what I'm gonna do, or put some type of braking system on, such as landing gear. Here we go. Yep. Time to add additional batteries. I think we only had about three batteries on this thing underneath the floor. So this should help on that aspect. Oh, don't need a tire. Here we go. And that's four nuclear reactors. Put some bigger batteries over here. Now just like the A-Wax itself, this wax is going to be in the air for quite a long time. I'm thinking about adding a camera to the bottom also, just so we have an easy way of viewing targets that are on the ground. There we go. Now that's probably gonna take a while to charge these things, so we'll just have to wait and test this thing later. But what else can we modify around here? Let's see. We got the side thrusters already. I don't think I need to do anything with that, but we could use a little bit more lift. This thing is not gonna get back off the ground unless we add some more thrusters. Maybe we'll put a couple of large thrusters here. Didn't cut out enough area. That should help us get airborne. Now, if I was intending to take this directly to space, I would use either, well, more than likely hydrogen thrusters instead of all, all these atmospheric thrusters. But then we would have to add hydrogen tanks, O2, H2, generators, and so on. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build, and please leave your tips, tricks, and comments in the comments section. I appreciate it. And we have liftoff.